The best way to understand the spine is to think of it as a series of floating bones that are held in tension by muscle and collagen. Collagen is the major component of ligaments and fascia that surround the bones of the spine. Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Conley. Today, I'd like to talk about the structure of the spine. I will then go into more detail about the specific components of the, of the spine. Essentially, you can think of the spine as a model of floating compression or biotensegrity. In this model, the vertebral bones are compressed by tension in the surrounding muscles and ligaments. Muscle acts like a spring allowing the curved spine to handle large mechanical loads without buckling or breaking. The needle tower, a sculpture made of aluminum and stainless steel, is a useful model to understand how the spine works. The human spine is a unique structure that allows you to walk upright against the forces of gravity. It is a flexible bony column with joints between the vertebral bodies which allow for rotational and sliding movements. The bony vertebral column is wrapped in weak ligaments with, which passively protect the spine from excessive movements. Layered on top are the muscles of the spine, which generate large amounts of force to counteract gravity and to actively control the movement of the spine. Any external force on the spine is amplified by the contraction of the spinal muscles. The spine is capable of flexion, extension, twisting, and bearing weight from any direction, really. And this flexibility is due to the large number of joints that are linked closely together in series. The vertebral column is made of four different types of vertebra, which are classified according to their location along the spine. Starting at the top here, there are seven cervical vertebra, 12 thoracic vertebra, and five lumbar vertebra. And then at the base of the spine, five fused vertebra form the sacrum. Now these lumbar vertebra here actually bear most of the load that's placed on the spine. Not surprisingly, the low back is a common site of pain. The functional unit of the spine consists of two vertebra and the intervertebral disc in between them. Furthermore, each individual vertebra can be divided into a front and a back unit, which would be from here on. The front unit includes the vertebral body and the vertebral disc. The back unit, from here on, includes the facet joints here, which act as hinges between adjacent vertebra. Typically, about one-third of the compressive load is carried by these facet joints when you're standing upright. However, when the spine is in a flexed posture, the entire load can be passed through the intervertebral disc in the front. In a young spine, the front unit here bears most of the load. In older spines, more pressure is actually transferred to the back to the facet joints. Now these facet joints are true synovial joints and these joints develop osteoarthritis similar to the process that you would see in the 
knee joint or the hip joint. And each vertebral body consists of an outer shell of cortical bone, which is reinforced internally by horizontal and vertical struts of bone called trabeculae. A vertebral body can be thought of like a cardboard box. So if the box is not supported internally, it'll be crushed when you step on it. However, if there are horizontal and vertical struts inside the box, it'll be supported when pressure is applied on top of the box. So what happens when these internal supports are absent? Well, this occurs in people with osteoporosis who have lost the horizontal trabeculae or struts supporting the, in, the vertebral body from inside. These weakened bones can be crushed with only minimal force. For example, when falling down from a standing position. This explains why vertebral compression fractures become more common as we age. Next, we'll talk about the inner vertebral disc sandwiched in between each vertebral body. We'll see how the tough circular layers of the annulus and the jelly-like nucleus propulsus allow for even distribution of force throughout the spine. Thank you for listening. I hope that this has been helpful for you.